Hi everyone, this isn't a normal video. I happen to be in Adelaide in South Australia at the moment visiting my dad. And my dad used to be a soldier in the Vietnam War. He's retired now. And one of the things he does in his spare time is help curate exhibitions at a museum, the Army Museum here at the Keswick Barracks in Adelaide. And he's been working on some little Vietnam exhibitions. I'm coming to visit him today just to have a look. I thought I'd show you too. All right, everyone, here's my dad. That's Peter. Hi. How are you, fans? <laughs> All the things in this museum, uh, some of the prices aren't close. There is one thing that it has more attention and attracts more people than any other thing in here. And you would never guess what it is. All right, I'm curious now. Clubs come to this. It's a shrine. Ah. It's an Australian rules football. The rats of Tobruk played with while they were under siege with the Germans for a bit of fun on the side. And when they all came home, those that survived, they saw the ball. And we got hold of it. Sporting clubs throughout the whole state and the rest of Australia come down here as groups just to look at that ball. South Australians love their Aussie rules football. And that one, that one saw more action than most. Yeah, <laughs> that actually saw bullets flying. That one saw bullets flying. So while they were under siege, this is actually a representation of Tobruk. While they were under siege and Ronald was pummeling away at them, they, t they were in tunnels scuttling from building to building and Ronald called them, we can't get rid of those rats. So typical Australian humour, they decided to call themselves, we are the rats, the rats of Tobruk. And that moniker stuck, of course, now the heroes. And when they managed to get some respite from the shelling, they had the football and they took it out and they played it back and forward between their pits and guns. And crowds of people had to gather around here and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And they were actually guys in their 20s, late 20s, early 30s. They were footballers from all over the state. They had their little come downs in Adelaide, had their lunch, they come down to look at the Tobruk footy. So that is looked at more than anything else and it's not a weapon. <laughs> so, if I, so if I'm going to put this on objectivity, that's my sacred object. That is sacred, and it is, and it's got their names, and it's got their, their number, they put their army number next to it, and they, then they put their names. That is really something, and the Australian War Memorial in Canberra really want that. <laughs> okay. Now, all that gear down there is what was carried in Vietnam, and that was, that's, that's my full equipment that I carry. So I've got the full pack, my hat, the rifle, the M16 rifle, all the equipment that I've put around my, my body. Then there's the food. Got Vegemite. And Vegemite was sent from home by mum and dad because we couldn't get it in the packs. Did you carry Vegemite? Were you a Vegemite yeah. fan? Yeah, my mum sent me Vegemite from home and because we couldn't get it in the packs. For people who aren't Australian, Dad, can you explain to them what Vegemite is? Uh, Vegemite is uh, iconic in Australia. Well, it's owned by America now. And um, it's, it would kill the taste of all the stuff that we ate. So we can have my biscuits. You can actually mix it into a stew. It's like a spread, isn't it? Like it, a... It, it's, a, a, yeah, it's a vegetable, vegetable extract. It's got a secret component, I suppose. But all kids in Australia were brought up on Vegemite on toast for breakfast, as you were, right? Yeah. And then there were the little cans of food. So there'd be tuna, there would be um, potatoes and gravy. The tubes were, uh, were condensed milk and jams. That's a little cooker that we had that we folded out and we could cook um, rice, curried rice over on that. Zippo cigarette lighter, every soldier had a Zippo cigarette lighter. That's a homemade stove that I would make out of an empty can. So I had two cooking stoves and that would boil my water for my brew of coffee or tea. That whole lot, in the old money, weighed 60 pounds the whole pack. And it was backbreaking, absolutely backbreaking. How much ammunition did you have to carry? I carried six magazines of ammunition for that rifle. That's 20 bullets in each, so I was 120, plus 20 on the rifle, so I had 140 bullets for that. The lightest equipment that I carried was that M16 rifle, which, which was basically made of plastic. Did you have grenades? Two hand grenades and two smoke grenades. That rifle up the top there is the Australian Army Infantry Rifle used in Vietnam. It's called the SLR, one of the finest rifles in the world. The majority of soldiers in Vietnam carried 
the SLR rifle. But you had an M16. I had an M16 because I was a dog handler and I had to have something light and it was also a full automatic. This one here is the back part of an SLR that was hit by a bullet. The actual bullet went through back behind the sights there. This is an M16, the rifle that I had, is a magazine that was hit by an AK-47 bullet that went straight through it. This is the barrel of an SLR and an AK-47 bullet went straight through the barrel. So these are all bits of guns that were hit by bullets? They're a real thing. Yep. Were the, were the people carrying those weapons... They are okay. They brought bits and pieces back. They all survived. Yeah, as far as I know, they were okay. Well, down the bottom here, when you and I were in Vietnam last night, I was talking about walking down on the minefield and the exploding jumping jack mine. Shooting down my legs, and I thought, oh, Jesus, I've been hit. And I've been hit between the legs. Shoved my hand straight down inside my pants to check everything and I realised that I'd actually pissed myself. There is the jumping jack mine down the bottom. See that one there? That's the jumping jack with the three little prongs on the top. When you trot it on, it exploded. That butt there on the ground is an, is an SLR rifle butt that's been hit by the shrapnel from a jumping jack mine. That pistol is a Viet Cong homemade pistol that he made in a workshop. Of course, behind is the AK-47 Viet Cong world-famous weapon. Dad, what, what do you hope that someone who comes here and looks at this will take from seeing it? Like, what's, what are you trying to convey? What do you want to happen here? It's, this is what a day in the life was like for a 19-year-old soldier in the 1960s. All the things that he carried, all the things that happened to him. We were flown by helicopter to a place out there and the helicopter dropped us off and then we walked up to the platoon. And the platoon commander came out to me and he said, we've got a good track for you here. I'm gonna tell you when to start and we will follow you. And he took me to the spot where the contact was and there's blood on the ground, right? And I looked at it and I looked up and I realized I was gonna go down a trail, a track. When I looked at that, I felt that I was sucking old pennies in my mouth. I got this taste in my mouth and um, I think really that's what you call a taste of fear. It was like sucking on old pennies or coins. I could feel this taste going through my mouth. 